Hi everyone, it's Jeff at Brimwood Farm here and you might recall a couple of weeks ago we got a new cockerel called Barry. Barry has been in quarantine for a few weeks and he's now in with his girly friends and that means there is one thing that's next and that is Silky Chicks. So here is Barry in all of his fine splendour. Hello. Along there with a couple of the hybrid silky damper hens. And then up here is, oh, where are you going Gertrude? Well, there is his beloved Gertrude. And I'm hoping that they are getting it on so we can make some much needed babies. So there's a couple of things you need to be aware of, especially if you're hatching in the winter. It's not prime time to be hatching, but I want to hatch some silky chicks out so I've got them ready for sale in May, June of next year. So the first thing is, your fertility may well be lower. Um, cock birds and hens aren't thinking, oh, it's nice and warm, let's make a nest, let's build eggs, let's lay eggs, let's have babies. So your mating may be a bit off. It will depend from cockerel to cockerel, but you might find that not all of the eggs are fertile. I haven't even seen Barry and Gertrude get it on. So this may be a dud run, but we'll find out. The other thing is winter induces uh, lower egg laying from hens. So whereas in the spring, if you collected your uh, hen eggs for 10 days, um, you'd probably get 10 eggs from a hen. Whereas Gertrude's probably only laying one every other day. Um, now as viability of the embryos sort of drops off after 10 days, um, I'll probably only get five or six eggs for the incubator from her. I'll up it with some damper eggs probably. But I don't want to do a massive batch, I just want to see how they're doing. The final thing is winter equals mud equals dirty eggs. So you need to do all you can to keep your eggs as clean as possible so they're not covered in poo because that poo will have bacteria in which during the incubation process can get into the, uh, the embryo through the egg and kill it. Um, you don't want to be wiping much of that off because you'll wipe away the natural protection of the bloom. Um, so just try and keep your nest box as clean as possible. Um, and try and keep the mud down, especially if you're trying to collect hatching eggs. So with that said, let's actually go and see if there's any eggs to collect. Now I probably should have checked this nest box before this morning to make sure there's actually an egg there, otherwise it's going to be a very short video, but here goes. We have an egg. Yay! Good, okay, so we do have an egg. So here is our egg. You can see that there is a bit of muck on it. It's not completely clean. Now the worst thing, in my honest opinion, that you could do is to wash this egg with water because you'll wipe away the natural bloom, which is a uh, protective layer on an egg to stop bacteria getting through. You can take a dry cloth and just wipe some of this off, um, but don't be too overzealous. My opinion would be it's far better to put a slightly mucky egg into your incubator than to put an egg in that you've scrubbed clean because that has basically taken off all protection, um, opened all the pores up, and the bacteria can just go straight through. So I'll, I'll clean this off as much as I can, um, but with a dry cloth. The other thing is how you store it. Now, you might think that the bottom of the egg is this bottom, is the flatter bit, like a, you know, like a little weeble. It's actually the other way around. So you want to store it either on its side, or you want to store it with the flat end up, pointy end down. And that's because the air sac is here. Um, and so you don't want the air sac to become detached. As the embryo grows, the embryo will be in the middle-ish, it will grow downwards and the air sac will grow out to give it the air and then it pips through. So you want to store it this way up, pointy end down or on its side. And to do that, I use an egg carton. So with your egg carton, literally just pop your egg in, pointy end down like that. And then what you'll want to do is every day, I normally have it on the side and then in the morning, I will flip it this way, and then in the evening, I will flip it back, just so that you're making sure that the embryo doesn't get stuck to the edge, even though you haven't even started um, incubation yet. You just want to make sure the embryo is in the best position. Then, when I've got, um, well, as many eggs as possible, hopefully in the next 10 days, I will put them into the incubator. So I've got my single egg, um, I'm just crouching down because the sun is coming over the fence and bleaching me in the eye. Um, so yeah, I've got my egg and I'm going to store it in a cool place, but not in the fridge. Do not put eggs in the fridge because what you get is the contents inside your shell shrinks. 
and it draws away from the shell and that allows bacteria to come through. Um, and that's actually good practice for eating eggs as well. So eating eggs and hatching eggs, just store them in a cool place. Um, I will be collecting eggs over the next 10 days to get as many as I can from the Danvers and the Silkies from Gertrude and Barry who are behind me there. Um, so hit subscribe to make sure you can keep up to date with this hatch. Keep your fingers crossed that it's not all dud because again I haven't seen Barry actually do the deed. Um, and I'll see you next time. Bye guys.